guys, hope you're doing well and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are gonna be talking about the decodable protocol. So we're gonna be talking about what it is, how it's gonna make our lives easier, and then we're gonna be doing an example in Xcode so that we can see this stuff working. So long story short, the decodable protocol makes parsing JSON way easier for us. So if you guys have ever worked with an API before, worked with parsing JSON data, you know that it, that it can get pretty tedious and pretty annoying, especially when dictionaries get large or when they contain substructures. So if we look at this example on the screen here, this is some data I have in Firebase about Pokemon. And each one of these dictionaries represents a po the uh, data for a Pokemon. So we can see that there are a lot of keys and then there's also this substructure here uh, that's an array that contains dictionaries as well. So parsing this stuff gets pretty annoying and pretty tedious. So let's go ahead and jump into Xcode really quick and see what this looks like. So here's our Pokemon object. And guys, if you're watching this video, I'm kind of assuming you know a little bit about object-oriented programming, APIs, parsing JSON, so on and so forth. Uh, so this is our Pokemon class, and these are all the attributes associated with our Pokemon. And then in this init method, we go through parsing all of that JSON data. So we basically have to, if we want to do this right, check and make sure that uh, those values exist in our dictionary and then set those values in our object. So this method gets really long and it's uh, pretty tedious to write all of this code and it doesn't even really cover parsing through that evolution chain. So like I said, that stuff gets pretty annoying and the decodable protocol is going to help make this process a lot easier so we can use that data how we want to. So let's go ahead and get started with Xcode and see how we're gonna implement this decodable protocol um, using this Pokemon class and connecting to this API here to make our lives a lot easier and see how this stuff works. All right guys, so go ahead and get started with the single view app in Xcode. I'm gonna call this decodable practice. Hit create. And we're gonna go ahead and jump into our view controller. And the first thing we need to do is get the URL that we are going to be retrieving this information from. So go ahead and say let base URL equal empty string. And this URL is located in the description for you guys. Really quickly, I'm gonna talk about what it is. So initially I showed you all this data in Firebase. We're not gonna be retrieving the data through this Firebase API. We're going to be getting it through a REST API, which is essentially all this data represented in its raw JSON form. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. And now what we're going to do is write a function to fetch our data from this API or from this uh, URL. So we're going to say func fetch data. And first thing we need to do is convert this base URL into an actual URL because right now it's just a string. So we're going to say guard let URL equals URL string pass in that base URL else return and now what we need to do is create a URL session to actually reach out to that URL and give us back a response so say URL session dot share dot data task with URL and hit enter on that block and then say data response error and before we move on let's handle our error equals error then we're gonna say print failed to fetch data with error, error, and then return. So I'm moving through this stuff pretty quickly, guys, because this is all just standard um, URL session stuff um, in Swift. Uh, I really wanna get through this so we can get into how the decodable protocol makes this process simpler. So now we need our data. So we're gonna say guard let data equals data else return. And what I'm gonna do is convert that to a string and print it out to see if we're, our fetch is actually working. So say let data string equals uh, string from data and then pass in that data and then say dot utf eight, okay? And then I'm gonna print that data string And then go to this bracket here at the end of it and say dot resume or else this will not work. And go ahead and call that method up in our view did load. And let's run our project to see if we're actually getting this data printed to our console. Just to make sure our API call is working. 
So if we look in our console, all that stuff is coming back to us, which is really good. Now um, I'm gonna go over how the decodable protocol is going to make parsing or using that information and parsing it a lot easier than the traditional method. So let's go ahead and start talking about that. So if we look at our completed project, we stopped right here. So we have to write this do statement and this catch statement no matter what, but um, this is what we have to do in, in using the traditional method to parse all this JSON. So let me go back to our information here and we can see this stuff represented through this JSON formatter. So if you go to jsonformatter.curiousconcept.com and paste all this stuff into the formatter, um, you can see what it looks like. And we basically get back how it looks in Firebase, right? But we see that it's represented as this big array. So what we have to do is cast it as an array of any object, and then we have to loop through the array and get each dictionary element and then create our Pokemon uh, by passing in that dictionary. And if we go back to our Pokemon class, we have this init method where we pass in this dictionary. And this is where we have to parse through all of that JSON data that we get back in order to set all the attributes for our Pokemon. So it's a pretty lengthy process. It's pretty tedious. Now what we're going to do is see how the decodable process or protocol helps us streamline this process right here. So let's hop back into our project. And what we're going to do is create a uh, struct for our Pokemon. And it's going to conform to that decodable protocol. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste in all these attributes that we need, guys. I'm going to delete this one here because we're going to get into that a little bit later. So this is our Pokemon struct with all the attributes that we need. And all these attributes are, uh, or these keys uh, are contained in the dictionary that we get back, right? So we have like an ID, a name, a height, blah, blah, blah. So instead of having to do all that other stuff, all we need to do is uh, go ahead and say do, and then we're gonna say let Pokemon equal try JSON decoder dot decode. Oops, make sure you do those, uh, the constructor, then we say dot decode. And then we're gonna say a Pokemon array dot self, Damn it, I hate that. Um, and then pass in that data. Okay, and then let's see if we can print out our, uh, like the first Pokemon we get back. And we need to implement this catch statement. So we'll say, let me just hop over to our completed project and grab that. All right, so you guys can go ahead and just copy and paste that in there. So uh, anytime you have a try statement, you need to um, handle the error with a catch statement, right? So ba basically if this try fails, it hits this catch block and then it's gonna give us back this error. So right now we're gonna run this code and we're gonna see that it doesn't work. Um, and it's just kind of an annoying part of this example, but we're gonna get through it and see what we need to do. So essentially we can get the idea of what's going on here though. All we need to do is uh, use this JSON decoder decode function, and it's going to give us back this array of Pokemon. So essentially, it's going to go through our dictionary, and because we conform in this protocol, it treats each one of these guys as keys, right? So let me expand this really quickly. So we look here, and it looks for that name guy, and then gives us back uh, Bulbasaur as the name. It looks for the attack and gives us back that 49. So instead of us having to write this init method where we pass in this dictionary and parse through that dictionary ourselves, the decodable protocol handles all this heavy lifting for us, which is super convenient. Um, so all we have to do is fix something really small really quickly. So I'm gonna run this and we're gonna see that it doesn't work right away. And it's because uh, we have this null uh, parameter in here. And that's just how this Firebase REST API stuff works. Because we have this Pokemon guy here, it treats that as null and then gives us back all the data. 
it's kind of annoying, but we're gonna fix it. And it's a good um, example for you guys to see um, how to work with like a JSON array or of information that isn't completely perfect. We're gonna see how we can solve this issue here. So we see that we hit our catch statement, right? It said fail to create JSON with uh, error. The data couldn't be read because it is missing. So um, hmm. anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do what we gotta do. So essentially we need to remove <coughs> excuse me, this null guy from uh, our array, okay? So once we do that, then we'll have uh, solely an array of dictionaries and then our decodable protocol will take effect and give us back the array of all these Pokemon that we need simply by using this struct here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have a function written out that handles that for us. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste it just because uh, and go through it with you guys just to save some time. So you write an extension of data and create this function called parse data that allows us to remove a string and then return a data object, right? So it does what we did up here by converting that data to a string. And then we create this parse data string where we replace the um, occurrences of that string we want to remove with an empty string. And then we convert that back into a data object and return it. So let's go ahead and call that method up here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're gonna say guard let data equal data. And because we wrote this as an extension of data, we can call this function off this data object. So we're gonna say parse data. And we wanna remove this string null comma. So it's going to remove that string for us and then give us back an array of those uh, dictionaries, which is what we need to decode our Pokemon. So now let's go ahead and run this and see if we get back the first Pokemon in that array, which should be Bulbasaur's information. And that's exactly what we get back, guys. So that's looking really good. So it essentially what we did was we said that, okay, I want you to decode that data that we get back. And again, it's represented as this array here. That's why we, um, are trying to decode an array of Pokemon and each Pokemon is represented by this struct up here. It goes through, treats all the, and it sets all these values for us by finding these keys. And all you need to do is make sure that these keys match up directly with the data that you are looking at in your array. So say we were ha to have something like base attack instead of attack, it wouldn't work. It needs to these uh, keys here need to match up perfectly. So that's a really important um, message there to remember, right? So then what it does is it uh, creates this array of Pokemon for us and we're just printing out the first Pokemon of that array and it gives us back all this information, which we can see is exactly the information that is uh, represented here for Bulbasaur, right? So, um, Really quickly, uh, just to go over this again, it takes the place of us having to write all this code in this gigantic init method, right? And it also um, makes parsing through that data, which is what we have to do here, a lot easier. So we have to, again, cast it as an array, then loop through that array, get each dictionary, and then create each Pokemon with a dictionary. So that's pretty annoying. And the decoding protocol allows us to do all of that stuff with just a couple lines of code. Now, um, what we need to talk about now is uh, this evolution chain here, because this is um, a, like another data structure within our dictionary. So we have to treat um, handling or parsing that differently with our decodable protocol. And I'm gonna go over how to do that right now, and then this video is gonna be done. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So decoding our evolution chain is going to be a little different than the traditional method that we used here. If we were to just try and go let evolution chain and represent it as an array of dictionaries, which is what that's what it would look like there, we're going to get an error saying that this does not conform to protocol decodable. So we actually can't have data structures like this within our decodable protocol. So and if you guys notice, um, 
Let me expand this really quickly. Our evolution chain is an array of dictionaries. So what we need to do to fix that is implement a separate structure for our evolution chain. Uh, it's kind of pretty similar to what we did for our Pokemon here. So this is how we decoded our Pokemon dictionary, right? And we decoded it as an array down here because all of our data is represented as an array. And then this Pokemon struct contains all the keys that we want to decode in that dictionary, which is represented as an element inside of this array. So let's go ahead and create a separate structure for our evolution chain, which is sort of the workaround to this problem. So we're gonna say struct evolution chain, make sure it conforms to that decoding protocol. And similar to how we set up these parameters here, we're gonna do that for our evolution chain guy as well. Because just like our main like massive data structure, it's just a big array. Our evolution chain is just that on a smaller scale, right? It's also an array of dictionaries. So we need to get this ID and this name, and they're both actually strings. Even though this is a number, here it's wrapped in quotes, so we need to represent it as a string, or our decodable protocol would not work. So we need to say, let ID string option and make it optional, and then let uh, name, name string and make that optional as well. And it's important to make all of these parameters optional, guys, because we want to make sure that if for some reason this decode fails, like say we spelled one of these keys wrong here and it didn't match up with what was in our uh, dictionary in our JSON data, we don't want our program to crash. So we make it optional that so that in case one of these guys doesn't work, it just returns nil and it doesn't say we unexpectedly found nil while trying to unwrap an optional value or something like that and get a crash in our program. So now what we need to do is uh, decode this evolution chain in our Pokemon struct. So similar, it's kind of pretty similar to what we did down here. So we're just gonna say let evolution chain and it's going to be an array of evolution chains represented by the struct that we just created. And you'll notice that we're not going to get any errors. And if we run our code, first let's say, let's try and print this evolution chain out for our Pokemon down here. And we should get back the JSON data for our evolution chain. And that's exactly what we get back here. So we see that we get back this ID and then Ivysaur and then Venusaur and his ID as well. So that's what we have to do to decode our evolution chain, guys. Really quickly, anytime you have like a substructure inside of um, another data structure, kind of like here, how we have this dictionary and then it contains um, another substructure, which is an, an array of dictionaries, you just create a separate struct for that, make it conform to the decodable protocol, and then give it the proper parameters. And then in your main struct, so obviously this evolution chain is a part of our Pokemon, you make sure that you cast it as the correct data type. In this case, we want our, this evolution chain to be represented as an array here of this custom struct evolution chain, which is very similar to what we did for our Pokemon in this decode uh, statement down here. So that's gonna be it for our decodable protocol, guys. Again, this is way simpler than what we had to do in uh, previously before this decodable protocol was available. Again, if I go over to my original project, we have to create this uh, dictionary and pass it in in our initialization method and parse through all of that stuff ourselves. But the decodable protocol essentially handles all of this for us. It does all that heavy lifting for us. And it also takes it a step further and we don't have to cast this stuff like this and, and loop through all that stuff and get the dictionary and then pass it into our, our custom object class or anything like that. It's all just handled through this pretty simple line of code here where we decode our stuff. We just have to make sure that all of our data types and all of our keys match up correctly with what's in our JSON data. So that's really powerful. It makes our life a lot easier. We have to, It's a lot less code that we have to write. And as long if you do everything right, it works really well. So I hope you guys like this video. Uh, go ahead and hit subscribe. Help me grow this channel. And we'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace out, guys. Thanks for watching.